Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and in today's video, I'm gonna be just talking about my day. Today, there were so many EEGs to do, it was crazy. Uh, there were so many overdue, I'll put up a picture right here. Uh, there just wasn't enough of us to do all of these EEGs. So there's a bunch left over for the weekend, which I'm working as well. I'm doing Saturday and Sunday as well. So that's exciting. Got plenty, plenty left over to do, and hopefully they don't order too many more because there's a lot left over. But the reason why I'm making this video is because since I did so many EEGs today, probably you know matched my record of most EEGs in a day. That's how many I knocked out. I actually came across something very interesting in the EEG. In the last EEG that I did, I stayed a little bit over time. So it's probably about 8.30 p.m. So I stayed maybe an, an hour of overtime to finish out this last one. And there's an interesting thing on it called an interictal epileptiform discharge. Now usually when you're doing these 30 minute EEGs, you're not really gonna see too many seizures or interictal epileptiform discharges unless they have like a really big past history of seizures. You usually see a lot of that stuff on the long-term monitoring that's done in epilepsy monitoring units. So on this one, I was surprised. It, it jumped out at me and there were multiple of them. So what I did was I just went through the regular recording um, and just watching the waves. I was thinking, oh, this is just gonna be a normal one. There's gonna be pretty much nothing wrong with it. It's just gonna be another EEG. I'm gonna write a quick report and call it a day. But while, when I was doing the photic stimulation, I started seeing these spike and slow wave discharges. So that made me think, oh, I've seen this in school. Photoparaxismal discharge, this is what it is. The photic is causing the spike in wave. Now, people who aren't familiar with EEG probably think that like the flashing light, that must cause seizures all the time. But contrary to uh, popular belief, that's not really true. It's not that common of a thing to just turn on the photic uh, light stimulation and just have someone start seizing up. So I saw these spike and wave interictal discharges during the photic stimulation. So I was like, huh, okay, let me pay attention. Let me see if it, it keeps happening. So I went through the EEG some more and even after the photic stimulation, I was still seeing these discharges. So that made me think, ah, maybe this wasn't locked with the photic. Maybe this wasn't the photoparaxismal discharge that I thought in the beginning. Maybe this is just these interictal epileptiform discharges that would be happening regardless of, what, of whether the photic light was stimulating or not. The photic light had nothing to do with it. It was just these interictal discharges that were happen, happening regardless. So that's the conclusion that I came to, guys. And I'm happy that I actually found something interesting on this EEG because if you've done a lot of EEGs, a lot of them are just just run of the mill, boring, you don't see anything super exciting that jumps out at you. But seeing all those regular EEGs is what made this uh, interictal discharge pattern pop out to me like super prominent. All, seeing all those hundreds of regular EEGs allow me to notice an abnormal EEG like that. So I'm getting my pattern recognition skills are improving with every single day. And if you guys didn't know, uh, I'm actually working on an automated system to detect these interictal epileptiform discharges with my company, Ion EEG. We're working on an automated spike and seizure detection. And in order to do that, first I'm working on artifact removal, removing all the things that the uh, spike and seizure detector could get wrong, like eye blanks, electrode pops, all the uh, stuff. And you just want the spike and seizure detector to just look at the brain activity. So I've got a lot of things in the works, guys. Uh, I'm excited to tell you all about it. But yeah, this was just my quick little story of how I saw this last EEG and saw something interesting. Uh, th this was my thought process going through it too. If you're a student, maybe you can learn something about this as well. Um, Maybe I'll put up a picture of a uh, example of a interictal discharge, just so you guys know, and if you're a student. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you guys' support. I, I gotta get back into making these videos. Even though I worked an hour of overtime, over 13 hours today, this probably makes it 14 hours if you're including this video. Uh, you know, hard work always pays off, guys. Always go the extra mile. So 
Thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. I'd love to talk to you guys. You guys are my EEG friends. And I'll see you all on the next video. I got to go home. And the Rays are playing in the playoffs. I, I missed part of the game, guys, because I was at the hospital. Uh, one of the Rays players hit a grand slam. They're winning. Uh, I got to go catch the game. And before I fall asleep and come back to work the next day. All right, good night, guys.